One of the things that most people don't understand about these engines is how the EGR cooler and system works. Basically what happens is, is that you have exhaust gas that comes up from your exhaust manifold that goes up to your turbocharger. Now let's feed your turbocharger and your turbocharger would be sitting in here. So the way the EGR system works is the exhaust gas, some of it gets diverted into this cooler here. And this is a heat exchanger. And this heat exchanger uses engine coolant that comes through this pipe, travels through the cooler and then back up into the intake and fed back into the engine. And then eventually that, that hot exhaust gas that's now been cooled gets to the EGR valve. The problem that occurs here is, is that you're using engine coolant to cool hot exhaust gas. That means 800 to 1200 degree exhaust gas is being exposed to your engine coolant. If you have an EGR failure, EGR valve intermittent failures are very common, especially in trucks that get idle a lot or in traffic a lot. What happens is, is that hot exhaust gas gets pushed through here past the EGR valve and now all of a sudden you've got 800 to 1200 degree heat boiling the coolant out of the system. I don't care what kind of coolant you have, if you have Ford Gold or Extended Life coolant of some description or whatever, it is going to boil out of the system. After this has happened, maybe half a gallon or a gallon of coolant has been pushed out of your system and now all of a sudden the EGR valve has cooled down, it's gone back to working, there seems to be no problem, but now you're running around with low coolant situation. You get into what's called a chronic overheating situation, which means that the coolant is at or below this cooler. That causes the cooler to crack and break in half. It also damages your oil cooler sitting on top of the engine because you're running low on coolant. You have this chronic overheating problem that will eventually lead to blown head gaskets and if you really push it, you're going to end up at this situation with a total and complete meltdown requiring replacement of the engine. To truly understand the SIGS leader and its vulnerabilities in the cooling system, you've got to understand the oil cooler. The oil cooler is around which most of the problems uh, evolved. The 2003 Model 6 liter was introduced. There were several technologies that were introduced with it. One of them was coolant, a propylene glycol system uh, that worked well on, on paper and in testing but never really quite delivered in the real world. Now since then Motorcraft has switched over to this premium gold coolant that they have now which is an ethylene glycol based system. But the problem that they had in the early systems, uh, and they have it today but not as much, is that the inhibitor package, the particulates that are dissolved in the solution of the coolant uh, under high heat and stress would actually precipitate and become solids in the solution. Now this is a real big problem because uh, as you can see here, this chalkiness that's all around the edges of this uh, oil cooler here, that's inhibitor. That's the stuff, the actual gold in the gold coolant uh, is precipitating out and, and becoming a solid again. In addition to cooling the engine traditionally like a gasoline engine, uh, the coolant is called upon to also cool engine oil. Hence the engine oil cooler. Engine oil cooler is located right underneath your oil filter. Your oil filter housing sits right on top of this thing. What it is, is it's a heat exchanger between engine oil and engine coolant. They both flow through here. Now, your, your engine oil goes in one end and comes out the other, and your, and your engine coolant goes in one end and comes out the other. And what happens is, as we can see in this cutaway here, they flow through these little passages. Now, the thicker passages is, is coolant, and the thinner passages are oil. They're, they're layers that are sandwiched between each other, okay, an oil layer, a coolant layer, an oil layer, a coolant layer, and as a result, the heat is exchanged from the engine oil, and the water pump pushes it through the engine and out to the radiator and cools it off. This is a, a, a very important thing to understand, because if you have a coolant that is, is old or, or has gotten to a point in its lifespan where it's starting to have the solids uh, uh, precipitate out, and they flow through here and start clogging this heat exchanger, well, that's the beginning of a real serious problem, okay? Because of the way the engine coolant goes in through the top and back out through the top, you will see uh, particulate matter start to, to build up in the bottom of the cooler. Uh, as a result, if this, if this engine oil cooler uh, is compromised, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent, this is all filled up with particulate matter down here, that's going to severely compromise the effectiveness of the cooling system in your truck. The solution to cooler problems is, is actually relatively simple. 
the first thing is an EGR cooler delete. Uh, second thing is to install tuning uh, from DP Tuner using an SCT tuner. And the third thing is to install engine damage avoidance system. Well, first, let's have a talk about EGR cooler delete. There are several products out on the market that are designed to uh, replace the EGR cooler. Uh, none of them actually work very well in the long run. Uh, the, the first one really is a, basically a replacement of the cooler itself with a pipe. And then to block the exhaust, you can do it one of two ways. You can either install a plug into the up pipe, which is a really bad idea, or the better solution is to install a pipe in the place of the up pipe that goes to the back of the cooler. Okay? So when you remove the cooler, this is what goes on to the back of the cooler, and this pipe is designed to replace this one. And this is a fairly difficult thing to install, this pipe right here. So a lot of people have been putting these little pucks in here in this spot to block it off. And that creates a whole nother problem. By installing just a puck in here on the up pipe, uh, it creates a whole nother problem because basically the exhaust system, the Y pipe back here, has bellows. Uh, and if uh, it's not supported here at this point, then the whole thing goes to shaking and it breaks these bellows and you lose uh, pressure, exhaust pressure on your turbocharger, which uh, makes the truck just have no power and exhaust leaks and whatnot. So the, the, the little puck idea is really a bad idea. I, I can't even stress how many times I've had to replace these pipes. And this is a this is a $290 piece just for these pieces. And this is another almost $100 for this piece. And then we end up having to pull the intake and put in, you know, replace the cooler and whatnot anyway. So it's the puck idea is a big no-no. We installed a bunch of these type systems, uh, the Sinister type system uh, with the with the up pipe. You know, they're fairly expensive, 400 bucks and whatnot. I had nothing but troubles out of these things, uh, especially in a fleet uh, ambulance type situation. This um, uh, clamps would go to leaking, you get coolant leaks, uh, it's just an ongoing problem. So what I came back to was, uh, was to actually take the EGR cooler and remove it and have it welded and reinstall the EGR cooler right back in its same place. So that means that the original pipe is still attached at the spot right here so that there's no... Um, no problem with the bellows and whatnot because it's supported correctly. And it looks factory. I mean, a visual test, you look underneath the hood and the cooler is still there even though it has been blocked internally. So the best result we've had is taking the stock cooler and welding it. We don't have any leaks from here. We don't have any problems with the Y pipe. And it looks factory. And it's a whole lot cheaper. I mean, it only costs, you know, less than 100 bucks to, to, to weld it on both ends. Because of the nature of how this engine comes apart, uh, the intake has to be removed, okay, to get at the EGR cooler. Now, this is an 03, so it's a little earlier model, but even on the later model ones, uh, you have to remove the intake to get to the EGR cooler. So while you have it apart, you know, since you're in there, go ahead and take the oil cooler out and, and, and check it to see if there's any of that chalky residue in there. Turn it upside down in a pan, a clean pan, uh, and see if any residue comes out of there. If you get any, anything at all that looks uh, like it's contaminant inside the uh, oil cooler, this would be the perfect time to go ahead and replace it while you have the intake off of the engine. Tuning is the next step. I get my tuning from Jody at dptuner.com and I like his economy tune for regular driving and towing tunes for towing. But most importantly, what this tuning does besides increase the performance of the vehicle and fuel economy is it shuts off that nasty EGR valve electronically. The last thing is the engine damage avoidance system which I invented specifically for the 6 liter. Because of the conversations of people saying, oh, I didn't know what happened, I was going down the road my own business, it blew up, okay? I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. And you know, for the most part, I don't think they're fibbing. Now these guys here, there's no way they couldn't have not smelt this thing going bad. But the fact is, had this been on the truck, they would have stopped long before this had happened and checked the coolant level. Now what this does is it measures engine coolant pressure. When you get to 16 PSI, this system will activate and my voice will come through here and tell you to stop your vehicle immediately. You check your coolant level, you're at risk of serious engine damage. Okay, now by, telling, by stopping the vehicle at that point, instead of 10 or 15 or 20 miles down the road, uh, you are going to be aware that there's an issue. 
You need to have the engine damage avoidance system on your truck. In fact, every six liter out there needs to have this system. By having this on your truck, you will stop and at least take a good look at what the situation is with your coolant level before you melt the thing down. Now, if everything seems to be fine and you proceed gently, you may have a cooling fan problem, you may have a, a, a different situation. But the fact is, is that you slow the vehicle down before you damage it. That's the whole purpose. That one situation where you're towing heavy on a hot day and this thing goes off could be the difference between you burning your motor up and melting it down and the difference between making it home in one piece. It will save your engine. Could have saved these guys lots and lots of money.